the entrance of the heart. All the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. Good morning. Good morning. Today's Mass is being offered for all of us in our families, and in particular for the anniversary intentions of Megan and J.T. Robinson. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins and asking God for mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem and priest of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king, and he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so, not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power, the Lord, will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is the princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are, you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, Come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, 
Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? But they remained silent. Looking around at them with anger and grief at their hardness of heart, Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, recently, I was at a uh, store, grocery store, and the man in front of me in line had a, a hand, a right hand that was very much gnarled and curled. Uh, and he was using his left hand and trying to balance things uh, as he put all of his groceries on the conveyor belt. And I was, you know, wondering as to myself, I wonder if this was the way he was born or if this happened through some kind of accident or mishap in his life. Uh, it's hard to know exactly what scripture means by saying a withered hand, but at least I have a mental image of a hand that's all curled under and clawed and basically unusable for work. And so in this scripture passage, it's Jesus who notices the man with a withered hand. He doesn't approach Jesus and ask for healing. Nobody comes to petition Jesus on his behalf. It's Jesus himself who observes that the man has this problem with his hand. And I'm sure Jesus recognized in an instant that this would be very limiting of his ability to work and to earn a livelihood and to support himself and his family if he had one. So uh, compassion begins to stir inside of Jesus, uh, a real sense of, of uh, solidarity with this man and with his inability to, uh, to have the normal function of his hand. And he decides he's going to heal him. Of course, this is all taking place in a synagogue on the Sabbath day. And already, it's clear from what we've been reading this week, already the religious leaders are on high alert about Jesus. He's doing everything contrary to the Judaic law. He's healing on the Sabbath day, uh, and he's violating other principles of the law that have just sent all the leaders into a tizzy. So Jesus, uh, it says, looked around at all the leaders uh, with anger. He was really angry that they were hung up on some of the principles of the law and couldn't see the bigger picture, the foundational uh, principle of the law, which was charity and love and care. And he was grieved. So Mark uses these wonderful ad, uh, adjectives. He was angry. Jesus was angry. He was grieved at their hardness of heart, completely closed. And he tells the man, stretch out your hand. And just have a mental image of this curled, gnarled hand, just very, very, very slowly coming back to its normal shape. And the fingers very slowly coming out until finally he's able to look to see his hand, and I'm, I'm sure he was overjoyed, overjoyed at being able to have back the normal functioning of his hand. And while that would be the anticipated reaction, it says the Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians, another group of legal scholars, against Jesus to put him to death. So they're completely uh, closed-hearted. What in the world would possibly explain such a violent and ugly response to a healing? Well, it has to be, uh, the only explanation is that Jesus' healing is a threat to these other people. It's a threat to their position, it's a threat to their power, it's a threat to their livelihood. They're, they're unable to see beyond that. They have, they have built their entire lives around being acclaimed as the scholars of the law. They have relied on that acclaim and that esteem to, uh, to build up their reputation and their livelihood, and that's being threatened. And they don't see that what Jesus is really coming to say is that God loves you if you are the lowliest person on the totem pole or all the way up the chain as a Pharisee or a, a Herodian or a Sadducee. They're so 
connected into getting their uh, sense of value and worth from what they do, not to mention power, not to mention money. All of these are intricately connected, and so therefore they can't rejoice at all, but rather they go out and plot Jesus' death. So this might seem to us to be pretty exaggerated, and maybe we can't identify with that in our lives, but every time we turn to the world for approval instead of God, every time we, uh, we build our life on what other people are saying about us and how they're applauding us and how they're approving us, we're on a very slippery slope to following the way of the Pharisees. And then, then we can't rejoice when good things happen to other people because somehow that's a threat to me or that's a threat to us. So we give thanks to God for his uh, tender-hearted care and uh, observance of our needs, even when we're not asking for a healing or for help. And we ask the Lord that we'll, we'll, never, uh, we'll never give in to having to, uh, having to get our value, approval, and worth from the world, because when we do that, then some really distorted things begin to happen in our life. May our value and worth come only from the fact that we are created and loved by God and saved by Jesus Christ. Please stand as we bring our prayers and deeds to God our Heavenly Father. For the church, may God grant her fidelity in living as witnesses to Jesus, our Most High Priest. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world's leaders, may the Lord help them serve their people and lead with compassion and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with difficult family relationships, may Christ, the Prince of Peace, guide them in reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause and add our intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a peace in Ukraine, for an end to war, violence, and racism in our world, and for a respect for all life and a respect for the values of God in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, please hear the prayers we offer, which we make in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, and for by my teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion anthem. You have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to ask you to keep in prayer, Father Andrew, and uh, all the buses that have gone from New Orleans with young people uh, to Washington, D.C. for the annual March for Life. They will all be back on Sunday, uh, late Sunday afternoon. Also, please keep in mind the parishioner, Danny Field, who's having a complicated surgery this morning. 
And finally tonight, we will um, we will have in St. Joseph Hall at six o'clock a pre-ordered meal for those who called in. And right after that, we'll show a recap, the final 10 minutes of season two of The Chosen and uh, episode one of, of season three of The Chosen. And then we'll have our discussion and unpacking after that. St. Joseph Hall, starting at six o'clock tonight, everyone is invited. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a great day. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.